The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord. This is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. It happened in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized in the Jordan by John. On coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens being torn open and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my beloved Son. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. I once had a professor in the seminary who said that to be a good homilist, you almost always have to have the scriptures in one hand and the newspaper in the other. Because if we do not know what's going on, then it's very difficult to speak to the faithful. And indeed, there is a great deal of wisdom to that statement. Because we as Christians, and certainly as Catholics, are called to read the signs of the times. That's really what it is to live in the world, but not of the world. It's to look at everything that's going on and to say, okay, Lord, now how does this fit into your plan? How does this fit into the life that you are calling me to live in you? And indeed, as we have seen the things that happened in our nation's capital last week, We're called to not just read the newspaper as gospel, but rather to look to the gospels to see what this can tell us about our Christian responsibility and witness. Indeed, it is a travesty any time something happens that brings about the loss of life and that brings about turmoil of one kind or another. And that, my brothers and sisters, is why it's so important for us to pay attention to the feast that we live today. Because without God, without orienting ourselves in Him, and without recognizing that God is absolute truth, we will always devolve to trying to find truth apart from God. And it always ends at me setting myself up as the thing that is true, the one that is true. In the feast of the baptism of the Lord today, we see a great gift that is offered to us, one that is very curious indeed. Jesus, the Son of God, goes to the Jordan River to be baptized. And it's interesting, my brothers and sisters, that he doesn't go a couple of miles up the Jordan River and say, okay, I'm here, I'm the Messiah, now everyone start coming to me to be baptized for salvation. But rather he goes to John the Baptist. He goes to John who is baptizing and he goes into the waters and he stands before John and he says, okay, I'm ready to be baptized. And John the Baptist In other parts of scripture says, what do you think you're doing here? I should be baptized by you, Lord, not you by me. And yet, the gift of Jesus going into the waters of baptism at the hands of John is so important for us. Because it shows that Jesus wishes to fulfill yet another one of God's promises. Remember why John baptizes. Do you remember? John begins baptizing people to prepare them. He says that my baptism is one of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. John's baptism does not have the power to forgive sin because only God can forgive sin. I should say that again because our world forgets it. Only God can forgive sins. And so Jesus, who himself is sinless, goes to John and effectively in taking on not just humanity, but going to John and being baptized by him, also officially takes upon himself all of our sins. Everything that was brought about by original sin, 
Jesus in that moment is saying, I am taking upon my shoulders. I am becoming one of you. And if you want to know the way out, if you want to know the way to be freed from sin, if you want to begin living for something other than just yourself, then come into the waters of baptism that I am inaugurating today. And so Jesus goes into the waters of baptism and comes out, and as he does, we see that beautiful image of the Trinity, the Father's voice speaking, this is my beloved Son, listen to him, I am well pleased by him. The Holy Spirit descending upon him, that same Spirit that was promised even in the Old Testament by the prophet Isaiah, rests upon Jesus. And my brothers and sisters, whenever you and I go into the waters of baptism, even if we're babies and don't remember what happened, that's exactly what is taking place in baptism. We not only are turning aside from sin, but we are being saved by Jesus Christ from sin. Because the waters in which we are baptized will also be testified to by the blood that is shed on the cross. And that's why we're baptized. That's why we baptize our children that's why we long for everyone on earth to know the baptism of Jesus Christ into the life of the Trinity. Because it's not just a passage of time. It's not just a rite of passage. But rather it is a true entry into the life of God. And so as I look at what happened in the news this past week and certainly what has been going on for some time now, it got me to thinking about the other kind of baptism that we stand to accept if we do not accept the baptism of Jesus Christ. That's what I often would call the baptism of the world. A baptism into the life only of the world is very, very easy. All you have to do is start to consume the sacraments of the world. Our mainstream media, a life that is given over to only having your appetites fulfilled, so much so that you're willing to destroy other people for those appetites to be fulfilled. Do you see how the sacraments of the world are directly opposed to the sacraments that Jesus Christ offers us in his church? Whereas with the sacraments of the Lord, the sacraments of the church, we are lifted up higher to God. The more and more we become concerned only about the appetites of this world and its so-called baptism, the more we get dragged even further and further downward. And I don't know about you, but it happens every time I just spend the entire day with a 24-hour news cycle on in the background. It begins whenever I listen to secular talk radio for more than a few days. I don't come away ennobled. I don't come away thinking that I have been lifted up higher. I always come away angry. Always. That's how you know you've been receiving the sacraments of the world, is because you only come away destructed. And you only wish to destroy what is around you. And my brothers and sisters, I think that we are far along now than when we first said yes to the Lord, that we need to be very clear that many, many, many upon the earth are more interested in the false sacrament of the world. And the only reason that I can say that with a great deal of definitiveness is because the effects are always the same. They always bring about sadness, pain, anger, destruction, always. And if you think about it, my brothers and sisters, how many souls have been baptized into Jesus Christ and yet have chosen not to live according to that baptism? I would dare say that there are oh so many who perhaps as babies were baptized into the Catholic Church, but no one, no one imaged the faith to them. They became pulled in, please God let it not be any of us, by the world around us and all the things that it purports to promise. The more and more we live in those cycles of sin, my brothers and sisters, the more and more we begin to believe that that's the only thing there is. Do you know what happens whenever you're baptized? We know that we get wet, right? 
We know that something externally happens. But do you know what happens on the inside? Baptism is an external sign of an inward reality beginning to happen. Whenever we are baptized, not only is original sin wiped away, that sin of our first parents, Adam and Eve, that sin of selfishness is wiped away and eradicated and can never return. Whenever we are baptized, our intellect, our ability to reason, our mind is opened up. Our heart begins to have the capacity to love and to grow in love. That's what happens invisibly in us when Christ's divine life begins to affect us by baptism. Do you know what happens when we reject our baptism by living only according to what the world offers? Well, first of all, we begin to fall into actual sin. Actual sin is what we are capable of even though we have been baptized. Because we live in a world that lives in the effects of original sin, we experience temptation. We experience having to battle against our own desires that are sometimes disordered. And so the more and more we dig into what the world tries to offer us, the more apt we are to become part of that type of cycle. And the more that we sin, the more that we get involved in those cycles of sin, the more that we allow ourselves to be given over to serious sins, the more and more our intellect that was lightened, given light in baptism, is now darkened. The more our heart loses its capacity to grow in love, and the more we have no desire for that. And all we become about is grabbing for power, Grabbing for our appetites to be filled. Grabbing to be the one on top while another is below my foot. My brothers and sisters, if I'm saying anything here that doesn't seem to make sense, then please let me know. But I'd be willing to bet you that the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. And you can see what happens when we give ourselves only to what the world has to offer. It's no surprise that it ends with what has taken place in our country and even in other parts of the world. And so the call, my brothers and sisters, on this, the feast of the baptism of the Lord, is once again to receive in my life what Jesus has allowed for me to experience. New life with him and a nourishment that can continue if I live with him. A way out of the cycles of sin. Brothers and sisters, the more and more our society becomes convinced that abortion, that euthanasia, that pornography, that adultery, that sexual behavior outside of marriage is okay, and the more and more that we are forced to say that that's part of the value system that we uh, uh, assign ourselves to in this country, the more and more and more we are going to begin to believe that the world and all that it has to offer and the, the fulfillment of our earthly desires is all that there is. And the more sad and angry and lonely we will become. This is why the church is here. And I dare say it is why she is under persecution in every age. Because we know that what Jesus offers, the world by itself can never completely understand. That if we want to know power, we must know surrender to God. That if we want to know wholeness and fullness, We must be willing to empty ourselves before the Lord. And if we want to know what it is to experience completeness, then we must be willing to bring our brokenness to him. And if you think about it, that's what all the sacraments of the Holy Church allow us to do. Number one, to recognize that I am a sinful individual and can't do it on my own. Number two, to be able to come to the Lord hat in hand and say, Lord, I wish to receive whatever you have to give because of myself I am nothing. And then three, freely does the Lord offer himself to us. Have you ever thought about that? 
that the only thing that it costs you to go into the sacrament of reconciliation is your own pride. The only thing that it costs you to come forward for the reception of Holy Communion is realizing that you cannot communicate yourself with yourself. The only thing that it costs you to come to church is saying, Lord, I am emptying the next hour of my life for you. And the only thing that it costs you to live as a disciple of Christ is saying, I don't want what the world has to offer because my citizenship is in heaven. Dear brothers and sisters, freely does the Lord offer, and he is the one who pays the price in full. How is it that we don't come to him? And I ask this of myself, how is it, Lord, that I don't turn to you? How is it that I can still be convinced that my way is the only way? How is it that I can still be convinced that when my appetites feel full, I am God? Dear brothers and sisters, that's not the way. It's certainly not what we hope for. As we experience the feast of the baptism of the Lord today, we remember that Jesus makes a way for us and we are nourished by the sacraments, just as the body needs food to survive once it's been born. Once we have been reborn in faith through baptism, we need the spiritual gifts that are given to us for our nourishment. And they're freely given. Don't be afraid to come to him, O Lord. Don't be afraid to come to the Lord, who will never turn you aside, will never turn you away, and will always say, come to the water with me. Freely receive what I have paid the ultimate price to give.